Welcome back to the Everything Financial Radio program. We are chatting today with Mr. Peter Schiff, economic commentator, author, and I should also mention radio show host. Uh, Peter, tell the listeners about your program. Yeah, I, I do my own radio show now called The Peter Schiff Show, strangely enough. And it's on about, I don't know, maybe 60 stations nationwide so far. We're trying to get it on as many as we can. But most people listen to it still on the Internet, which you can do by going to shiftradio.com. And I do the show live from 10 a.m. to noon, so it starts in, uh, what, 45 minutes from now. This is the live show. I take calls for a couple hours, usually have a guest uh, for a half hour. So people can listen live, or they could just go to shiftradio.com at any point during the day and listen to the show. Uh, we loop it for uh, the first 24-hour period until we replace it with the next live show, which is you know 10 a.m. the following morning. So again, Shift Radio, it's my last name, S-C-H-I-F-F radio.com. Well, terrific. I'd encourage the listeners to uh, check it out. Uh, always a pleasure to talk with you, Peter. I'd like to jump back in because we talked in the last segment, Peter, about the Fed and their easing program, and you'd outlined uh, a couple possible end scenarios, a currency crisis or potentially a, a big increase in, in bond interest rates. Um, if they continue easing, does that mean more inflation, or are you in the camp where we look at the private sector debt levels that those debt levels are going to just uh, be be hard to overcome, and we're going to see a, a more of a deflationary environment. What's your take? No, it's you know the QE is inflation. I mean, it's the definition of inflation, which is printing money, you know, monetizing debt. That's what QE is. So it is inflation, and it's all the debt that is the reason that so much inflation is being created because the debt cannot be paid, can't be repaid, it can't even be serviced at this point. Uh, so. If we were going to have big defaults on debt, then it would be a deflationary outcome. But that's not what's going to happen. And, of course, the biggest debtor is the United States government. If the U.S. government defaulted on its Treasury obligations, yes, that would be deflationary, because a lot of people that thought they had money would find out that they don't. But I don't think the government has the integrity to default. I think they're going to take the coward's way out, and they're going to print. And so everybody is going to get paid uh, what they're owed. The problem is it's not going to be worth very much when they try to spend it. Uh, so, you know, those, those are the choices that the government has. Inflate away their debts or default on their debts. But repaying their debts uh, with legitimate money that actually has purchasing power isn't even a, a, a possibility at this point. It's the, the numbers just don't work. Peter, let's talk a little bit about the banking system because uh, I think I read an article not long ago that derivative exposures at the four largest U.S. banks are now higher than they were in 2007 or 2008. So it seems that all the efforts at uh, maybe reforming the financial system haven't worked out so well. Uh, what's your opinion and your understanding of that? Yeah, well, unfortunately, you know, all those too big to fail banks that we bailed out, they're now even bigger than they were before, and they're even more vulnerable to failure now. I think the banks inherently are more addicted to artificially low rates and more exposed to a big backup in interest rates than they were going into the 08 financial crisis. So we took a bad situation and made it worse. Instead of letting the free market clear away uh, all the problems and re, you know, basically reallocate banking resources, uh, bankrupt the bad banks, let the good banks step up and, 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 and absorb their, their positions in the market, instead of having a real cleansing, we did the opposite. We rewarded the bad actors. We rewarded and bailed out the bad banks and reduced their cost of capital. And we destroyed a lot of the smaller, well, better managed banks that could no longer compete with the big banks that had a big advantage in the market. Uh, so we further concentrated the banking power in these giant uh, you know, monstrosities. And, and, and that's why the Fed, one of the many reasons why the Fed cannot take away the QE. They cannot raise interest rates because they'll kill these banks. Uh, so they have to keep them alive, and the only way they can do it is you know, with this life support. So it's the banks that need cheap money. It's the Federal Reserve, that, I mean, the federal government that needs cheap money. So the Fed is just going to supply it until it can't do it anymore. You know, that, you know, people think, well, why can't they do it indefinitely? Well, like for the same reason you can't just take ever larger increases of heroin indefinitely. I mean, because eventually you'll die of an overdose. So you've got to stop at some point. There is a limit uh, to how much you can do. And there's a limit to how much QE the economy can handle before it completely implodes. You know, you don't want to get 
to that end game, which is runaway inflation, hyperinflation. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're carting around your money in a wheelbarrow. So if you want to avoid that, you have to stop it at some point. But the longer you wait to, to stop it, the worse it's going to be when you do, because the bigger the problems that, that have built up. And so the, the more painful it is to resolve them. And that's what happens when you finally take away uh, the QE, the market forces are able to come back in and, and try to fix all the problems. But, you know, the problems are bigger. And so they require a bigger fix that, you know, is more painful economically to have to live through. So, Peter, certainly QE has been good for stocks. Uh, what's your outlook for uh, major U.S. Uh, stock market indices moving ahead? Well, I think that it's going to keep moving up. Uh, I think we're in a correction now. I'm not sure how much further down we're going to go. I, I think the Dow can get down, you know, even Dow, down around 14,000 or so. I mean, right now, um, what is it, like 14,700 or 14,800, um, so something like that. Uh, but I don't think there's much downside beyond that because I just don't think the Fed will let the market really crater. They'll just come to the rescue uh, with more pretty money. So, you know, because when you print money, prices go up. You know, it's not just food prices that are going up or gas prices, stock prices, too. Those are prices. Real estate prices are going up. I mean, that's, you know, the Fed will admit that the goal of QE is to make the stock market go up, to make uh, the real estate market go up. They just won't admit that the same QE that makes asset prices go up makes consumer goods prices go up, but it's the same money. So, yeah, I think stocks are going to go up over time, but it's not going to really mean much to you if the cost of living is going up faster than your stock portfolio and if a lot of people are forced to sell off their stocks to, to, to buy food. So, you know, it, it, fewer and fewer people will be helped by the rise in the stock market. Meanwhile, the real economy continues to suffer. I mean, just because the stock market goes up, it doesn't mean that we're producing more goods. Uh, for more people to consume. It doesn't mean we're creating more jobs. It just means that the stock market is higher. Well, Peter, uh, we're going to have to leave it there. We appreciate you uh, being on the program today. Uh, you can uh, listen to Peter's radio show at shiftradio.com. I'd encourage you to check it out. Peter, thanks for joining us today. Hope you'll come back. Oh, anytime. And don't forget, my newest book is The Real Crash, America's Coming Bankruptcy, How to Save Yourself and Your Country. So you can you know, check that out on you know, Amazon or Barnes & Noble. All the usual spots. I'd encourage the listeners yeah. to do that as well. Thanks for joining us, and Everything Financial Radio will return after these words. Stay with us. Yeah.